I was recently at my in-law's house in Texas with my wife and our two children. I'd gone upstairs for something, and I turned around and saw my little four-year-old boy, Aiden, standing there, wearing an astronaut costume that he had found in his uncle's closet from when his uncle Evan was a little boy. And this costume was perfect. It's a cloth astronaut's costume. And I just looked at Aiden standing there in this cloth astronaut costume with a cloth astronaut helmet on, and I said, you look adorable. And he got this enormous smile on his face, and he looked at me and said, yes, I do. I was struck at that moment, not just at how adorable my child looked in an astronaut costume, but how in that moment I could see that he knew his own loveliness. You know, we're in this season of Lent now, and it's a season for the church that mirrors the 40 days that Jesus spent in the desert after he was baptized by John the Baptist. And in Matthew and in Luke, we hear about all sorts of temptations that Jesus underwent. But the story in Mark is, is only two or three verses long. I want to share it with you today. It comes from Mark chapter 1. In verse 11, we read at the end of the baptism as Jesus is coming up from the water, and a voice came from heaven. You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts and the angels waited on him. And when we read the story in Matthew and in Luke, we read about Jesus being tempted to turn bread, uh, turn stones into bread, or to become the earthly leader of kingdoms, or to throw himself from the temple. The story is much simpler in Mark. It just says he was tempted. And the one thing that I come back to time and again in that passage uh, is that the angels waited on him. And in all of these passages, I wonder sometimes, was the biggest temptation to turn stones into bread or to become a worldly leader or to leap from the temple? Or was the biggest temptation for Jesus to forget who he truly was, the beloved? All of us in our lives sometimes wander. All of us sometimes are tempted to despair. But I think... The deepest thing that we can remember in those times to keep us from becoming truly lost is our belovedness. As I looked at my four-year-old boy that day, I had one of those parental moments where my heart could burst with love, and then I also had this shadow side of pain. Because when we look at our children, we look at the children in our lives, if you don't have your own children, those nephews and nieces and godchildren, Sometimes you see how they know their beloved, and you also know that this world will one day break their hearts. And my hope for my son and for my daughter is that when the world breaks their hearts, they will remember they are beloved. They won't be tempted to forget that. I don't know where you are today. Maybe you felt a little lost Maybe you've been tempted by despair. But I hope you'll take with you during these days the words of the Catholic priest Anthony DeMillo, who says uh, to us as we contemplate and meditate on God, he says, Behold the one beholding you and smiling. Wherever you are, whatever you're going through, you are God's beloved and He holds you in His hands with love.